what's up? When I was at new school, well actually when we were at new school, um, I was always nervous that I'm practicing the wrong things or practicing the right things wrongly. Basically that I'm doing it all wrong. I did spend a lot of time practicing, but just, yeah, I was always nervous about it. And what I want to talk about today is really eight great exercises that I feel were very significant for me as a musician and also for James. Um, I have my very, very good buddy, James Mosler, here with us tonight. Well, actually, it's daylight, so it's not tonight. But still, James is an amazing artist, musician, human being, um, just everything really and he's also started this band called Moonhooch about 10 years ago uh, toured the universe and uh, now decided to do his own thing so yeah just all around amazing stuff please check out his YouTube channel and also his Patreon he has a lot of really really great stuff there music education and also just great music so I'll have the link there no worries thanks yeah of course yeah. it's great to be here thanks dude um, yeah, so we're basically kind of like catching up and hanging for a couple of days, recording some music. James is also on the new album, so we recorded some more drums and some stuff. I was thinking, just basically, we're talking about music and just playing till 2 a.m. every night, and I thought of just sharing some thoughts and some ideas that we're talking about, and these eight points, these eight exercises are things that we both feel very strongly about that really made us stronger musicians, right? And, and still, those exercises are great and helpful. Some of the exercises are kind of simple, so you can just walk in the street and do them. It's really fun. Some of them are a little more intense, but I would say check them out. They're really worth your time. And at the end of the video, there are two, three points that I would say are also super important. Maybe some of them are a little more complex, but I would start the process because the way I see it with music, even if the exercise is hard, it's worth our time to start the process. So in two weeks or a month or a year, you'll feel more comfortable with that, which makes your music and creativity stronger. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. If you guys like this video, the best way to support us would be by clicking the like button, maybe dropping a comment and maybe even sharing with a friend, that would be awesome. Um, if you're interested, there is also a PDF on the Patreon with this information, with exactly what we talked about in the video, and thank you. One, breathe in the time. So this is an exercise James just showed me this morning when we're having some <laughs> PG tips. Well, actually, this is very much not sponsored. I just love this tea so much. Um, yeah, I just thought it would be hilarious. It wasn't. <laughs> what James was showing me is, is like basically you play something, an exercise, and you breathe in a few beats and you breathe out the same beats. So, in a sense. <laughs> I was just breathing in four beats and breathing out four beats. But I guess it could also function in a context of, of playing, playing, right? Just like playing a blues or something and breathing in. Let me try and breathe in four bars. One, two, one, two. But it's cool, like, I mean, it's interesting, I guess, just connecting the breath to what you're playing in a very intimate level. So, yeah, I love it. I'm going to practice it with everything I do. Or when you go pick up something heavy, tendency is to hold your breath 
and uh, that'll um, influence the way that you actually perceive the time mm. as you're playing the music. So it's a nice, like, very grounding exercise. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Good for endurance and, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I think also there's an exercise that um, basically when we're playing fast, oftentimes I feel we get very tense. And then one of the ways to play fast better is to find the places that you have tension in your body and try to relax it. And sometimes you need to stop and be like, breathe and and just kind of relax basically and i think the awareness to the breath and connecting that breath and that kind of chillness is super helpful two triplets i'm a big fan of triplets and this exercise is really simple but also i think super effective so the reason i love triplets is because um it feels really good. If you're talking about jazz and improvised music, the awareness of the triplet is a very big deal. Triplets are basically sort of the subcurrent of that music. So the more we are aware and able to perceive in a clear way that triplet, we will be able to articulate that when we're playing and also when we're transcribing or writing music. So just the rhythmic awareness really makes everything lock in. Rhythm is probably the most important thing in music and maybe James would say, the world. <laughs> so the exercise is this. Basically, we're trying to take one beat and listen to the triplet. So one, two, three, one, two, three. That's easy. Okay. Let's do it for a second. One, two, three. Tiki -ta, tiki -ta, tiki -ta. But now what I'm going to do is just play and accent the last two triplets. So the second and third. Ta 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 Ta, ta. And if that's hard, you can always add ta 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 ta. Okay, not crazy hard. But now what we're gonna do is gonna do the same thing with a two and four. So one, two, three, four. Ta 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 ta. Da, da, da. And you can add that mm on the beat on beat one just to kind of feel that lock. So it's sort of like this cycle, this like circle that we feel. And then once you feel start feeling comfortable with that, do that for a few months and you'll feel very strong with that. Now it's with rhythm, I, I feel like it's not about doing it. It's about like having it a part of our system in an undefined way. It's just like you just you feel it, you breathe it, and then it comes out months later. But it's fine because we're gonna play music for some time. So months is actually a very short process. Um, sometimes it's also weeks. It's fine, but it's like these things take time. Once you feel comfortable with slower tempo you can just push it a little bit yeah and exactly right i was talking with uh with a good friend also shy maestro amazing piano player plays a lot with avishai Kwan. he told me this story that avishai told him that with all this syncopation stuff, what we want to get to is we want to be um, feeling at home or feeling this basically non-tension at the syncopation. So syncopation, like the second or third trip or whatever it is, that placement that has tension right now needs to feel completely at home. Um, and that's the process that we need to do. So we need to practice it and go through that process until we feel on this emotional level, comfortable with it. Three, connect with your voice. James, you got it. Um, uh, there's a saying in jazz music in particular, but music all around the world, that if you can't sing it, then you can't play it. And uh, uh, there's a lot of truth to that because when you're singing something or, or speaking something, it's something that your body and your mind is producing. So it's very hard to f uh, fake that. Yeah. And uh, with internalizing rhythms, uh, you can have a lot of fun with, um, with fitting just rhythms in one beat. You know, like how, 
uh, it's very natural to fit four beats, uh, four notes in one beat. All right, so now we're gonna do the exercise. We'll start, do 60 BPM, and we subdivide the beat from one to 10. To 10. All right, let's try. One, one, one. I guess we both practice these ideas for some time, so yeah, like just seeing someone do this like whoa, that's a lot going from one to 10, but what is actually happening there? So let's break it down really slow so it's super clear. Ta, 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 so that's one, then ta, 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 then three is ta, ki, ta. Which one do you do? Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, like when you deal with things like fives and sevens, it can kind of get a little daunting. Like, where do I start? How do I feel this? Yeah. Um, I feel like a good place to start is to break all the numbers down into twos and threes. Okay. So the South Indian system, you heard Rotem say, Takadimi, Tadikina Tom, Tadikina Tom would be five syllable as it translates to the South Indian redundant. Yeah. And uh, Takadimi. Um, but I think that uh, you can go a little bit faster if you do, instead of Tadikina Tom, you do Taka Takita uh, or yeah. Takita Taka. And then for Takadimi, I mean Takadimi, you can say that super fast, but Taka Taka is, is also fine. So you just break down any number system that you want. Let's say we're doing seven, and you say, oh, I want to divide that um, three, two, two. So you say, Taka to Taka Taka, Taka to Taka Taka, one to the one to one to one to the one. Taka to Taka Taka, Taka to Taka Taka, Taka Taka, Taka Taka. And the goal is to have um, the space between each of those notes be consistent. Yeah. And the exact same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we go just for a second, for me, really slow. So ta, 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 then ta, ki, ta, and then ta, ka, dimi, or you say ta, ta, ta. Uh, ta, ka, ta, ka, or ta, ka, dimi. Okay, so ta, ka, dimi, or ta, ka, ta, ka. And then for five, I would say, I guess, ta, di, ki, natum, but you would say? Uh, either ta, ki, ta, ta, ka, or ta, ka, ta, ki, ta. And the reason I like to do that is because it kind of allows you to choose how to subdivide it. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah. Three, three, two. That is cool. Yeah. Taki taki ta taki ta taki ta taki Yeah. So taki taki ta taki taki ta taki 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 ta taki taki ta 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 taki Taka 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 taka, which would be uh, three groups of two, or you could do two groups of three. Uh -huh, so taki ta taki ta taki ta taki ta taki ta taki. So let me try that with your. <coughs> so yeah, I would really usually think about taki ta taki ta taki like just the triplet, but you say taka taka taka. Ah, uh, sorry, taka 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 taka. So taka 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 Got it. Okay, so taka 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 or or taki ta taki ta. Yeah, it is a very different feel when you have the twos or the three. But it's cool. I guess both are cool. And seven, you would still do like taka taka taki ta taka taka taki ta like two two three or taki ta taki taka taki ta taki ta or taka taki ta taka taka taki ta taka. Right. So two two three and then use it three two two and then the last one was two three two. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I would say sometimes just the combination of four and three or, I mean, I bet I guess any combination is fine. Um, do people do also like, like, tarikina to taka, tarikina to taka, taka, mm, five plus two. Or yeah. different things like that, I totally. guess. Totally. And then for eight, um, taka dimi, taka dimi, or taka dimi, taka, taka juno, or... Uh, oh, yeah, taka some people, juno. Some people do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, nine, I guess, taka, 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 taka. Just threes. Three threes. Three threes is a nice way to feel nine. Yeah. It's yeah. Essentially like a waltz. 
Yeah, it feels good. Uh, and then the 10, I guess I, before I just said two fives, but I guess you have quite a few options to break it down. Mm -hmm. um, these things are just, you know, a process. I mean, I was just start from, you know, one to eight, if the nine and 10 are, are tricky, but just start feeling that and try to make sure you're being balanced and, and accurate with the inner subdivision. And the promise of that is that after you do it for some time, you start feeling it better and you start being more accurate and hearing the grid better uh, when you're playing. Mm. Four, feel. So when you're playing music, people say that word a lot, right? Just like, oh, what's, how does it feel? And this is basically rhythm, but just a little more subtle. So if this is the beat, you can kind of feel it a little bit on top or right on it or a little behind. So there's a cool exercise that we can do that kind of solidify that. Um, and I'll just show you that right now. So I'm just gonna play, yeah, 60 BPM. Oh, think about it, this is two and four. I'm playing four notes. And I'm trying to first lock into this, just be on it. center and be able to be flexible with it. Different artists oftentimes have a certain feel that they kind of play with. For example, Clifford Brown is always kind of on top. Pat Metheny also is pretty much on top. Hank Mobley is pretty much always behind. Dexter Gordon is really behind the beat. Different artists and different drummers and bass players would have a certain feel of their playing. So they basically kind of place their music against the beat in a certain very slight way but very consistent so the trick is to try and understand where the center is try to be consistent and then play with it and that is a lot of awareness five three against two maybe this is the most basic kind of polyrhythm that we have um, maybe it's also the strongest one it exists in so many cultures and so many styles of music whether it's classical jazz rock pop really anything so by raising the awareness and being comfortable with it, I feel we can play better. So what I did, and I had a teacher back in Israel that told me to do it with all my limbs. So I'll, I'll show the exercise. Basically, I put the guitar down. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stomp my left foot, this one, basically quarter notes, and then I'm gonna start first with my right hand, against that, so basically just that. Once I'm comfortable, I'll just move to this hand, so. And then to my right foot, so. There's a carpet, so I don't know if you can hear it. And then I'll do it, this one, the left foot, against all the others, <laughs> so like, so, ah, uh, wait, ah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> check it out. So yeah, that's it, I guess. So basically the idea is that we are kinda really hearing that relationship of three against two and feeling it in a very, very primal way. In a good way, just like feeling physically how it feels and, and kind of alerting our body how it feels to feel that tension, but also enjoy it. The next few points I think are really, really important, so please stick around. Six, polyrhythms. So this is something that I was always a little afraid of. I remember being in new school and all these 
cool drummers, including yourself, did all these crazy rhythm things, and I was like, whoa, what's going on? And the truth is that after like starting to work on these slowly and carefully, I think it's getting easier. But James has some cool tricks and some like cool ways to see it. So you got it. Yeah, well, patience is definitely the key with, with learning, I mean, most things, but polyrhythms in particular, it's not a practice that you're going to want to rush because then it's just not going to work out. Um, but I think it helps to sort of um, think about uh, polyrhythms as simply just two rhythms happening at one time. Two, imagine two metronomes, you know, one sound is happening, the interval of time between one sound and another is the same, and the same goes for, let's say, this, this sound is red, this sound is yellow, and then every now and then they'll line up and become orange or whatever, you know. Nice. Um, when you hear birds in a tree, communicating, singing, you know, it's usually like a pretty cyclical rhythm that one is doing than the other, and those are polyrhythms. So they're a lot more ubiquitous than most people tend to think, and there's uh, sort of an air of like pretension around them and a lot of styles of music, like, oh, I, like uh, I know how to play polyrhythms or whatever, and then like someone else says, oh, like that's not musical, like he just plays polyrhythms, but I think polyrhythms are musical. You can be really tasteful with the, the way that you play around with the time and um, having sort of a different awareness of the time as it's happening sort of um, exposes you to a new realm of creative exploration so yeah and it's basically a cycle right it's it, it's sort of like a cycle in time that creates some tension and release so there is this point of departure there is tension that is being built and then it's being released at the downbeat at a certain moment these are two really cool polyrhythms, very useful on uh, all kinds of music. Uh, one is three against four, and a good way of sort of um, uh, remembering what it feels like is there's uh, these you know phrases that you can say that the way the syllables line up and how you say them it kind of falls into the rhythm of the polyrhythm. So for three against three against four, pass the goddamn butter, pass the goddamn butter. I want to try it. Pass the goddamn butter. Okay, so that four is in relation to the three, right? That's three. Six, seven, three. Plus the two, seven, three. The next one would be, I guess, five against four, right? And I don't know, I always was a little nervous about that one. So I think you have a cool way to think about it. Um, yeah, my uh, high school band director uh, exposed me to five against four. Uh, I forget what piece we were doing in orchestra, but there was five against four, and she was like, "There, pregnant. Don't know what to do." And everyone's laughing because, like, you know, our high school. Wait, there. Wait. So it's uh, uh, in relation to the five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. There. Wait. So uh, one, two, three. Uh, there. Maybe in like 50 years we can also change it to his pregnant don't know what to do. His pregnant don't know what to do. And if she's pregnant, that also works, I guess. That also works. She's yeah. pregnant don't know what to do. She's pregnant don't know what to do. And uh, it's important to think about the 16 now, now. Pregnant. She's duck it, duck it, duck it, duck it, duck it. That's how it should sound. Duck it, duck it, duck it, duck it, duck it, duck it, duck it. So I don't know what would be just straight eight notes. Yeah. So she's duck 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 bob down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Man, I love it. That's really great. That's a great way, yeah. Yeah. Seven. Hits, hits, hits. So basically here what I'm thinking is just playing hits on different parts of the beat. So you can decide that you're in eighth note subdivision and then say, okay, cool, I'll play all hits on beat one or the end of one or two, or the end of two, three, the end of three, four, and the end of four. And don't rule any one of these out. They're all cool, actually. Um, I'll start with the end of one, because one is maybe a little too obvious. And what I'm gonna do is just play a chord on the hit. And it, of course, also is gonna affect my phrasing, because I'm kind of like imagining that hit. Now, the process that we want is basically to feel 
and to have this like emotional connection with how it feels like how the end of one feels on a non-intellectual way it starts from an intellectual place you're like one and two and you know so it's like one two three four tap tap But then, right after we do it for some time, we're like, just, you can imagine, feel of the end of one, or one, two, three, four, ta, just two. The same thing is like, you can just say, count the numbers, but after some time of doing that, it just becomes kind of more natural. You just imagine that feel of sound. It's like hearing a certain color at the end of the day. It's like, you can imagine the color and the sound of it, and you don't need to really think of like, oh, this is major seven flat five. No, you just imagine this color in your mind. And that takes time. I'm just gonna play um, I Fall In Love Too Easily and I'll just play on the end of one, for example. Three, four. <laughs> just this idea of where the hit exists and how I can play around it and you can also build your phrase to end on the end of one or start on the end of one just raising the awareness to that point in time and the same way copy paste to all these beats with eight notes and later on with triplets. I'll add to that there's like um, it's a really good I mean drummer's exercise but at any instrument if you um, if you practice improvisation um, in a way where you're uh, restricting yourself from certain beats, like I'm gonna play a whole solo and never hit the downbeat, is a great way to sort of open up that uh, uh, world of possibilities. Or like I'm only gonna hit on like the uh, like triplet of second triplet note of B two or whatever it is, you know. Mm. Anything. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I love it. What happens if we do the same thing with chords, like? Let's play rhythm changes and never play the note B flat. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> It's really fun, but it's definitely not the easiest exercise, but I feel it's really cool It's basically trying to have this independence between what we're doing and what we're saying So I'm gonna say the numbers one two three four With you know, we can have the metronome 150 BPM two and four for example, and I'm gonna play a solo But you know if you're just playing eight notes or triplets, it's gonna be easier the trick is to try and kind of like expand and push it, but still keep the one, two, three, four going. I'm gonna try. <laughs> Thank you. 
like you see, it's a little hard, but it's cool. You you kind of see where you go off, and then you try to like focus and be more clear. And you also see where you're placing things. So if you're counting like literally one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. say okay I'm putting it on one now let me put it on the end one it's very clear because you're saying the number is one two three four thank you guys so much for listening and taking the time really really appreciate it and I'll see you guys next week <laughs>